Hi, we are back with the DAMS Unplugged series and we are going to discuss a case with a uh, radiological perspective as well as the microbiological perspective. I am Dr. Sumer, I have with me Dr. Mamta, she is going to talk about uh, microbiology aspect and I am going to talk about the radiology aspect of the disease. In particular, we have chosen a case and a case based approach here so that clear understanding about the disease process and uh, the how a question can be framed about this disease in your entrance exam uh, for your example your NEET exam or your USMLE exam how a question can be framed will give you an idea so let us start by discussing the history of the patient this is a case of a 29 year old derelious man who was picked up by the ambulance crew from a roadside um, and he was diagnosed to be when we further looked at his history he was diagnosed to be HIV positive six months back and he has history of multiple sexual partners so we're dealing with a HIV positive man young man relatively young man found in delirious state by the ambulance crew as a part of his evaluation general physical examination more or less was unremarkable there was no neck stiffness no peplidema and when we look at the lab findings the outstanding find finding that you can see we have highlighted is CD4 count was 41 cells per microliter and uh, we already know he is HIV positive he has a low CD4 count and CSF was done because he was in delirium CSF evaluation was done which revealed uh, the gram staining, no acid fast staining, culture, everything was unremarkable. But the key thing, another key thing that if you notice in the test was ELISA for antitoxoplasma IgG was reactive. So with this background, an MRI of the brain was advised. And they advised a contrast enhanced MRI with a routine MRI. We, we look at both the images and try to understand. So what I want you to know today is Look at the first image which has been labeled as A in the image that is a contrast enhanced MRI image and the image B is a T2 weighted MRI image. So if I look at the contrast enhanced MRI image can you see there are multifocal ring enhancing lesion primarily in the basal ganglia area and maybe some ring enhancing lesion in the corticomedullary junction. And if I look at the T2 weighted image you will see there is extensive surrounding edema around the lesions. So if we look back and try to put the things together, so we have a patient who is HIV positive patient, a low CD4 count and uh, IgG for toxoplasma is reactive. And we also see multiple ring enhancing lesion primarily in the basal ganglia area and the corticomedullary area with extensive edema. This is all going in favor of CNS toxoplasmosis which is very important to be considered in a HIV positive patient. Now, how do we confirm our diagnosis? Usually, the diagnosis in this condition will be radiological and on the basis of radiology and serology, if we put the radiology and serology together, this is enough to start treatment and we do a post-treatment which is sulfa sulfadiazine and pyrimethamine. After treatment, if you look at the post-treatment MRI now, you will notice in the first image, the number of the ring enhancing lesions have actually reduced and amount of enhancement has also reduced. And you can also notice the edema has also particularly reduced. We can see that on a T2 weighted image. So that response to therapy is the confirmation of the provisional diagnosis that we had made in this patient. Now I'll ask Mamta to help us with the microbiology of this organism. Thank you, sir. Now Toxoplasma gondii is the pathogenic species which is, an, which is an obligate intracellular organism. Please do not get petrified by this image. You just have to uh, remember the key features of this particular parasite. First and foremost, regarding any parasite, uh, you need to know what is the definitive host and what is the intermediate host. Now, the definitive host in this case is the cat or other felines and intermediate host is mouse or any other mammal except cat and human beings also. Right. So, how does man get infected? We are interested in knowing this uh, particular parasite because it can infect us. Now. A peculiar feature of this particular parasite is that there are three morphological forms of the same which can infect us, namely, as you can see over here, uh, intake of the tissue cyst, uh, tachyzoids present in the blood or uh, uh, during organ transplantation or intake of the oocyst. Whatever be the case, what will happen if suppose the tissue cyst is being ingested? then the bradyzoids will be released from the tissue cyst or if suppose the oocyst is being ingested then the sporozoids will be released. Now the destiny of either the, of both the sporozoids and the bradyzoids will be they will transform into tachyzoids inside the intestinal epithelial cells. Now tachy means fast. 
so tachyzoids are the rapidly multiplicative forms and when these forms are formed they will destroy they will infect and destroy other cells as well but our immune system is not going to be uh, you know uh, quiescent at this particular time uh, point of time uh, there will be some immune response against these tachyzoids so they will be cleared from the blood and they will now uh, attack whom they will now attack different or organs uh, for example the brain the muscle the eye and the fetus in case of transplacental um, transmission which will be because of tachyzoids because as i said in the blood tachyzoids will be floating now as a result of the immune response these rapidly multiplying forms will transform into slowly multiplicative forms known as bradyzoids and these eventually will form tissue cyst now you need to remember that in human beings the two most common sites of tissue cyst formation are the central nervous system and the cardiovascular system now in an immunocompetent individual nothing will happen in the sense that uh, one would not even know that uh, some infection had taken place because the person would be absolutely asymptomatic problem occurs in case of immunocompromised individual classical case being an hiv infected individual which we have been discussing so far so in such individuals what will happen the tissue cyst in the brain will reactivate and will lead on to features of a cns infection a noteworthy feature is that the myocardial my, the myocardial cyst does not reactivate even in immunocompromised individuals right and cat being the definitive host the sexual cycle of the parasite will take place in the cat and as you can see the oocyst formation will take place over here it will be excreted out and it will be taken up by the intermediate hosts now this is another schematic rep uh, representation of the different morphological forms of this particular parasite as you can see these teardrop shaped uh, structures the tachyzoids uh, these uh, the second picture b uh, exhibits tachyzoids inside the host cell it is not surrounded by a true membrane now bradys bradyzoids in the diagram c are surrounded by a well uh, you know well formed wall uh, so this is a true cyst and figure d is depicting the sporocyst with the sporozoids inside and e represents the wet mount of sporocyst so what we have learned today is the take home messages that whenever you have a hiv positive patient and uh, cerebral toxoplasmosis should be considered especially if the patient comes with focal neurological signs and fever and also it should be treated as soon as as early as possible so that uh, because the symptoms quickly cease if you start appropriate therapy at the right time so this was the message of the day was cns toxoplasmosis is a important infection in a patient with who is hiv positive please look out for it and i also want to add here is as a radiologist we are often called upon to look at a mri in such people to differentiate from lymphoma lymphoma and cns lymphoma is on a mri usually more subependymal while toxoplasmosis is more present in basal ganglia and in the corticomedullary area like in this gray white matter junction like we saw in this patient another thing is that uh, you know although not absolute but toxoplasmosis is usually we would be more likely to be multicentric as compared to lymphoma and lymphomas classically are solid but keep in mind in a aids patient or hiv positive patient you may have a necrotic lymphoma which would look like a ring enhancing lesion so it is tough to differentiate between them at time but in this patient the serology helped us to actually clinch and finalize the diagnosis to as uh, toxoplasmosis So I hope you enjoyed this episode of Dams Unplugged. Do write back to us if you enjoy this. Do follow us on Dams Daily channel on YouTube and Dams Daily page on Facebook for more such informative videos. We we intend to bring more and more such integrated videos to make your medical learning easy.